never experienced or thought about traveling Japan, you gotta do it. It's such an incredible country. But this video specifically is all about the top three or my top three experiences in Kyushu. Now Kyushu, for those of you that have never been, is that bottom island. You have Honshu, which is like the big, big long one, which is like Tokyo, Kyoto, Osaka, that's all on that one. At the top, you've got Hokkaido. A lot of people go skiing up there, but down the bottom is Kyushu. Now the bottom is where this video is at. All right, so let's get stuck into it. Hey, Cheryl, come over and look at the volcano here, in the back. <laughs> I'm sure the first question that you've got for me is Jake, how do you get around? Well, on this particular trip, I did spend a little bit of time in Tokyo and Kyoto, but as I said, this video is all about experiences in Kyushu. Now to get around, because I flew into Tokyo, Tokyo, Honeida, Honeida Airport, um, what I did is I pre-booked one of these things, which is a Suka card. I'm sure if you've been to Japan, it's very much the same as a Mikey card in Melbourne or a Go card in Sydney or um, I can't even remember the one that was in Brisbane or maybe I've screwed them up, but it's just like a travel card, very basic. You can pre-book them, pick it up from the airport, has 15,000 yen already loaded onto it, which is about 20 bucks, costs about 35 bucks and away you go. Gets you to your hotel, um, won't get you to Kyushu, but yeah, we'll get you to your hotel if you are staying a night say in Tokyo. Now, the next thing you are gonna need is one of these. Now, both these booking links I'll put in the description of this video so you guys can grab them straight away if you are planning on booking your trip to Kyushu. The next thing is this JR Rail Pass. Now, I will say this is expensive. This costs about 900 bucks, but if you're doing more than three trips, it's far more valuable and cost effective to buy the JR Rail Pass than it would be to individually book legs on or like seats on a Shinkansen. There's different class sections. We're in the non-reserved. We just have a gen general ticket and they have five cabins which you can walk into. The, you know, the main sort of method of travel around Japan is via train. It's train travel. And to get from where we went to, which was Tokyo, then down to Kyoto, then to Fukuoka, which is in Kyushu, we took the JR Pass. Now, the other thing is exploring Kyushu itself, this came in hand because we stayed in Fukuoka and then we traveled to different parts um, of Kyushu and to get there, we took the Shinkansen. So we did about maybe five, six trips on the Shinkansen and this was actually cost effective. So first tip is just getting around Japan, make sure you've got these two tickets and you know, you'll be good to go. My number one recommended experience in Kyushu is to check out the Asukuju Geosite or Geopark. Now this is a day trip, you can book this entire experience. Um, you'll have a, a, a guide, a local guide, who is phenomenal by the way. Our guide, her name was Helen. Uh, she's British but she spoke very fluent Japanese and was able to really give us valuable insights and ask any question that we had about the region. Also scientific questions. So the Asukuju Geosite is a caldera that formed 90,000 years ago. It was an eruption, pyroclastic flow and plates and other scientific things which she can explain to you far better than I could. Um, but I was just down for the landscapes. Like this place was amazing. day trip plays out is we got picked up from the train station. She took us to the first spot, which we had a bluebird of a day. It was just incredible. We got to see the Asa Caldera, which is about 25 kilometers in diameter. Why this is so impressive is because there's other calderas in the world, but you actually can't see from side to side because I don't know, maybe like one of it is caved in. You can actually see the full almost circle of this caldera. It's so, so, so cool. Um, so we went and we checked out some really great vantage points to view the caldera. Then we went and had, um, oh, then we went to this secret shrine. <laughs> no, no, it's a, it's a it's video. A secret shrine. <laughs> secret shrine. shrine with a long name. Okay. <laughs> you okay. Just call it a secret shrine, buddy. So we've come down to Kalamashkini's. <laughs> that was perfect. What was it? 
Kami shikimi kumano imasu shrine. Instead of you're looking for love, you um, That's gift me. a coin with a hole in it. You bow twice and you give the bell a really good ring to wake up the gods to say, come on. Give me some love. love. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it the coin first? Coin first. Okay. Great. Put it in. Um, all right. Um, give it a ring. Two vowels. Two vowels. Hear that? Pray, Hear that? Pray. Oh, pray, pray. And bow. And bow. Oh. Yes. Dang, what's that? Marvin Gaye's playing already. <laughs> <laughs> I found this place thoroughly enjoyable because of those rituals. After the secret shrine, we had an incredible lunch. And then in the afternoon, which is why I would recommend packing hiking boots and trekking attire, is we got to go see the Nakedake volcanic crater. Now, depending on what time of the year you go, will depend on whether it's open and how close you can get to see the crater. Uh, at the moment, it's a level two, so this is the closest we can get. But I think when it's a level one, um, Helen was saying, our guide was saying that you can get further up. You get closer and I think you can maybe get somewhere up there and see within the rim but <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty gnarly so there's basically a guy sitting in the car park saying you can't walk any further in the car park but that didn't matter because we then went around the corner and we went and hiked Mount Eboshidaki and we could see the Nakedake volcano and all the seismic activity in the background from this hike <laughs> to scale the climb now about 20 minutes in you hit these stairs and it's pretty much stair masters straight up uh, the track looks like this <laughs> so probably one for the hiking boots wouldn't do it in just gym shoes uh, it's pretty muddy there's ice follicles <laughs> it's kind of slippery see you at the top the day by checking out this giant pimple <laughs> it's just a really cool crater which was the final part of our trip and then we're back to the train station and back but the Asakuju Geo site was honestly one of the most awe inspiring and incredible landscapes I've seen and experienced and photographed so if you are chasing a little bit of an intrepid adventure put this on your Japan bucket list this is our friend Jackson <sighs> Sam he's just hanging out the next must-do experience is along these same lines. And I guess this video is more suited to me that likes intrepid trekking outdoors experiences. Um, and Kyushu is known for them. This part of Japan is littered with volcanoes. And when that sort of seismic activity happened years and years ago, it created these gorges. And now you've got these beautiful you know, these, these beautiful lakes. The next is the Takachiho Gorge. Now this experience can be booked with the, the exact same tour group. Um, and I do have a booking link in the description if you are interested in doing the same day trip. But basically the Takachiho Gorge is the most, I think it's Japan's most best kept secret. So I was posting a bunch of TikToks and a few other different pieces of content on my social media. And I had Japanese people commenting saying, where is this? <laughs> best kept secret. <laughs> say in regards to like getting one of those boats is that at certain times of the year apparently it's a week called golden week the lines are really really long so try and avoid golden week traveling to the Takachiho gorge any other time of the year should be pretty good but do take that into consideration we however were extremely fortunate and lucky that tourism was slightly down well i'd say really down so we pretty much had the whole gorge to ourselves Along with the boats that you can kind of swim through and get that beautiful picture of the waterfall, there's a little bit of a, um, a walking track where you can come around and you know, walk around the gorge, 
check out some of these beautiful trees, immerse yourself in the nature. Oh, you also can't swim here, or I haven't seen anyone swimming here, so it's not the kind of place where you'd bring your togs or bring your swimmers. Lunch here was delicious, and you will get to check out a bunch of other activities um, around the region. These two, like the Takachiho Gorge and the Asa Volcanic um, Geosite, together, two separate day trips, oh, that just put them, if you have a three day itinerary, add those to your Kyushu bucket list. Last experience I want to share with you guys are the Beppu Hot Springs. It's another day tour, it's a full day trip, you'll get picked up from your hotel and you'll head down, it was a two hour drive for us from Fukuoka, you get to check out the Beppu Hot Springs and the other hot springs that are in that town of Beppu, they're incredible. There's a few different interesting, I guess, zoos or there's a crocodile farm, crocodile zoo, <laughs> lots of crocodiles. Um, and then there's other hot springs that you can photograph and immerse yourself in. But this region is known for, it's like a spa treatment. So, you know, if you want to go to the Beppu hot springs or traditionally Japanese people would go there to the onsen, the Beppu onsen and relax. Um, on this particular day tour, it's more of a sightseeing thing. You get to photograph it, check it out. You can have like a foot massage and then you'll go on to check out a few other sites. degree water mixing with cold like one degree atmospheric you know air temperature this is the result <laughs> On this specific bookable tour, we then went and had lunch in Yufuan, which is this beautiful, quaint little country town. And it's got really great arts and crafts shops. This is one street. And then you get to go and check out the Kokouno Yume Suspension Bridge. <laughs> This is another one of those places which just really filled my photographer's intrepid shot list. <laughs> I just wanted to get photos that, you know, just really blew me away and this specific spot did. I think it's 770 meters above sea level. It's about 360 meters in length from like one end of the bridge to the other and it is just a really cool uh, sight to immerse yourself in and experience. This bridge is honestly super impressive. It's 770 meters, 777 meters high. Uh, it is 390 meters long and it is 360 degrees of absolute bliss. You can literally see uh, these beautiful uh, waterfalls and the valley, it's so impressive. Have a look down there. You know what they say, don't look down? Oh. Would hate to drop a GoPro down there. Japan has been on my travel bucket list for forever. I mean, I live in Australia, so it's literally like an eight hour flight to get to. And I'm, I grew up with Japanese people constantly in my life. But if you do choose to check it out, think about breaking your trip up into these different regions. There is so much to see and do in Honshu, in Tokyo, Osaka, Kyoto. You could literally just do a trip to Kyushu and that would be such an incredible experience. Um, I had an incredible time. If any of these uh, experiences that you've seen in this video, you too want a book. Kluke Travel have given me a $20 discount on any of these bookable experiences. All the links are in the description. There's a code there. Put it in at the checkout and you get 20 bucks off your upcoming trip or your upcoming holiday. So I hope that helps out. If you guys have enjoyed this video, if you found any value in it um, or you have any questions, feel free to drop me a comment below or reach out on social media. Send me a DM. I'm pretty active and I'm pretty good at responding to people. Um, but if you know anyone that wants to go to Kyushu, share the video, punch a thumbs up button and subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you're new around here, my videos are all about travel, creativity, hopefully inspiration. I'll link some other videos, travel tips, and some travel films up here in the cards or in the description below, and I'll see you guys hopefully in the next upload. All right. <laughs> Arigatou gozaimasu. Sayonara. Jaya. Peace.